forecast.ets.seasonality function is used to calculate the length of a recurring pattern in the specified timeline. It is closely tied with the forecast.ets because both functions use the same algorithm to detect seasonality. Here is the syntax. Values a range or array of historical data for which you want to predict future values. Timeline an array of dates or independent numeric data. The dates in the timeline must have a consistent step between them and can't be zero. The timeline should have a regular interval hourly, daily, monthly, quarterly, yearly, etc. Data completion an optional argument specifying how the algorithm should handle missing points in the timeline. Although the timeline requires a constant step between data points, forecast.ets.seasonality supports up to 30% missing data and will automatically adjust for it. The data completion argument can have the value 0 or 1. 0 treat missing points as having the value 0. 1 or omitted calculate the value for missing points to be the average of the neighboring values. Aggregation, an optional argument specifying how the algorithm should aggregate values that have the same timestamp. Although the timeline requires a constant step between data points, forecast.ets.seasonality will aggregate multiple points which have the same timestamp. This can be any integer between 1 and 7. 1 or omitted, its default, the average function is used for aggregation. Other options are 2 count, 3 count A, 4 max, 5 median, 6 min, and 7 for sum. Forecast.ets.seasonality function returns the length in time of a seasonal pattern based on existing values and a timeline. Forecast.ets.seasonality can be used to calculate the season length for numeric values like sales, inventory, expenses, etc which exhibit a seasonal pattern. Column B2 to B40 has monthly sales from 1-1-2019 to 3-1-2022 and A2 to A40 contains a timeline. Use this formula to get the length of seasonal pattern. Omit data completion and aggregation arguments, the function returns 12 because the values represent monthly sales data and the length of the season is one year, meaning the pattern repeats every year. One year is equal to 12 months, so seasonality is 12. The chart to the right shows this data plotted in a 2D line. The chart clearly shows that the pattern is repeating every year. Column B2 to B21 has quarterly sales from 1-1-2019 to 10-1-2023 and A2 to A21 contains a timeline. Use this formula to get the length of seasonal pattern. The function returns 4 because the values represent quarterly sales data and the length of the season is 1 year, meaning the pattern repeats every year. 1 year is equal to 4 quarters, so seasonality is 4. For bimonthly sales and a season of one year, the seasonality is 6. B2 to B21 have quarterly sales from 1-1-2019 to 10-1-2023 and A2 to A21 contains a timeline. The function returns 8 because the values represent quarterly sales data and the length of the season is 2 years, meaning the pattern repeats every 2 years. One year is equal to 4 quarters, so seasonality is 8 for 2 years. If the forecast.ets.seasonality function is unable to detect a repetitive pattern, it returns the value 0. For example, the chart shows that the data does not have any pattern, so the function returns 0. The calculated seasonality value has greater accuracy as more data values are supplied to the function. For example, we have data of monthly sales for years from 2015 to 2020. Use this formula to calculate seasonality based on first three years. Pass values for three years only. The function returns 11 even though the expected value is 12. Use this formula to calculate the seasonality based on five years. Pass the values for five years. Now the function returns 12, which is accurate. Here are some errors you get with this function. 
If the supplied values and timeline arrays have different lengths, the function returns an error. Pass B2 to B13 for values and A2 to A12 for timeline, the function returns a pound NA error. If a consistent step size cannot be identified in the supplied timeline, the function returns a pound num error. In this example, the dates don't have a consistent step like monthly, quarterly, etc. So the function returned a pound num error. The function can work with incomplete data where up to 30% data values are missing. For example, we have quarterly sales for three years. Some of the periodic dates are missing. For example, 10-1-2019, 4-1-2021, etc. The missing points are filled in based on the data completion argument. If it is omitted, the default is 1. If 0 is passed, the missing points are treated as 0. If 1 is passed, the missing points are filled in as the average of the neighboring points. The function returned different results based on data completion values. If the data completion value is less than 0 or greater than 1, function returns a pound num error. The pound value error is returned if data completion argument is non-numeric. If more than 30% data points are missing, the formula returns an error. Delete uh, two more rows all the formulas returns an error. A timeline may have duplicate values. The values with the same timestamp are aggregated as defined by the aggregation argument. For example, we have three rows for 4-1-2020 with different sales values. Seasonality changes based on the aggregation argument passed. When one is passed, the function calculates the sales value for 4-1-2020 as the average of the three values. When four is passed, the function calculates the sales value for 4-1-2020 as the max of the three values. The valid range is from one to seven, the function returns an error if any other value is passed. The pound value error is returned if aggregation argument is non-numeric. To download practice excel file, please click on the link in the description. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.